Good day everyone and welcome to the F1 Corner after the qualifying session of the 2021 Emilia Romagna Grand Prix and yes I picked the San Marino flag just for reminiscence of old time when we were in Imola. Qualifying session very eventful, a crash from Yuki Tsunoda, pole position by Lewis Hamilton and Sergio Perez out qualifying Max Verstappen. We'll get into all of that as we go through every session and analyze what has been going on. So let's not lose any time and dive right into it. But of course, please remember to smash the like button, to subscribe and leave a comment about what you think is going to happen tomorrow during the race. So we will start, as usual, with Q3. We're out in Q3. Kimi Raikkonen, Antonio Giovinazzi. Mick Schumacher, Nikita Mazepin, and Yuki Tsunoda. I mentioned it in the intro, Yuki Tsunoda crashing on his first outing for Alpha Tari on at the exit of turn 15. So 14-15 is a tight chicane, Tsunoda taking too much curb at the entry, losing the rear and unable to uh, compensate, finishing in the wall he will start in the last position, a lot of damage on that car, but at the very least, uh, he's safe and, um, you know, just moving on. The two Haas, no big surprises there, Mick Schumacher 18, Nikita Mazepin over half a second be behind Mick, which is quite a bit, but still, uh, yeah, not surprising. If anything, I think we can, uh, we have to question Mazepin's move at the end of Q1 where uh, he overtook Giovinazzi at the beginning of both their fast lap, which might have prevented Antonio to make it better than P17, but uh, these are things that might happen in qualification when two drivers are going fast. The two Alfa Romeo, a bit disappointing here to not see either one of them in Q2, but we have to give, give credit to Williams, both Nicolas Latifi and George Russell made it past Q2 um, and they expected that, well not necessarily expected that, but they're expected to beat Alfa Romeo or get closer. It seems like really uh, Williams is uh, at least making it a step forward for that qualifying session. So once again, Raikkonen 16, Giovinazzi 17, Mick Schumacher 18, Mazepin 19 and Yuki Tsunoda in dead last. On to Q2, we're out, bit surprising. Carlos Sainz, George Russell, Sebastian Vettel, Nicolas Latifi, and Fernando Alonso. So, let's start, uh, yeah, let's start with Carlos Sainz, the big, uh, the big disappointment of the day, with Charles Leclerc making it to third during that session. Um, but to give him credit, the, the pack was very, very tight. Between first and 12, where George Russell is, there is one half of a second, 0.5 second. And Sainz, 11th, barely three tenths behind Charles Leclerc. So can we blame him that much? Maybe not, but uh, he will be disappointed with that result. George Russell, 12, Nicolas Latifi, 14. Um, good result for both Williams, they were not expecting to go higher than that anyway, but very, very uh, nice effort, very good lap. Maybe a chance of point tomorrow if the race pace is good and uh, they get a bit lucky. This will be something to watch. Sebastian Vettel, another outing to forget in qualification. Uh, still not at ease with that car, the car itself looks a bit skittish, so Vettel Yes, we'll be disappointed, but in all fairness, when you look at it, only two tenths and a half behind Lance Stroll, who is used to driving that car. So Vettel getting better and uh, within a few races should be right back on track. Fernando Alonso is the one that uh, I think is the big surprise slowest of uh, the pack in Q2. Same time as Nicolas Latifi, but because Latifi did his time first, uh, Alonso is behind him. Um, four tenths behind teammate Esteban Ocon. First time for Alonso being outqualified by a teammate since uh, Malaysia 2017. So um, really 
Alonso still probably not 100% in that car. He said during the interviews at the beginning of the weekend that he needs to work on himself. It's not the car that's the problem as shown by Ocon's space, but uh, really Alonso needs to work more on his performance. So 11, Carlos Sainz, 12, George Russell, 13, Sebastian Vettel, Nicolas Latifi starts in 14, and Fernando Alonso will have a lot of work to do, starts in 15th place. And now, on to Q3. Mentioned it at the start, Paul for Lewis Hamilton, Sergio Perez second, and Verstappen third. But we're going to start at the bottom as we usually do. Lance Stroll in 10th place, no time set has both of his laps got deleted for exceeding track limits, otherwise he would have started in 9th place in front of Esteban Ocon, who gets 9th place for Alpine. Um, nothing really that they could do more with that car, if you look at the gap between Ocon and the closest contender, Valtteri Bottas and the two McLaren, it's uh, nearly half a second, so Alpine is probably gonna fight for a, a few uh, crumbs uh, tomorrow, 9th, 10th maybe. Um, never know, the weather could uh, probably affect the race, so potentially more, but uh, Alpine could not quite there in terms of midfield. Valtteri Bottas, also very disappointing result, starts only in 8th place, 4 tenths uh, slower than teammate Lewis Hamilton. But this means also that he will not be able to help Lewis in his fight with the Red Bull. Bottas will try to make up some ground at the start, but starting on the medium tire is going to be tough, considering that all those in front of him, or immediately in front of him, the McLaren, Gasly and Leclerc, will be on the soft. And we know it's very hard to overtake in Imola. Good result for the two McLaren. Uh, Ricardo 6, Norris 7. Norris, heartbreaking moment at the end of the session, had the third best time in front of Max Verstappen, but had this lap deleted because he exceeded track limits. That is really a shame. Norris had the, one of the best lap of his life, probably, with that McLaren. But still, it shows us the potential of that car and where they can maybe be tomorrow. Maybe even fighting for a podium with a little bit of luck. Uh, Pierre Gasly, good job. This is where the Alphatari of Yuki Tsunoda could have been without that crash at the beginning. Gasly, good result once again. We, last year in Imola, Alphatari was really the third best car. They finished fourth with Daniel Kvyat last year in that at that track. And this is also a track where uh, Alphatari practice a lot because the factory is only 10 miles away so they can just go there and run an uh, older car to get accustomed to the track. Charles Leclerc once again astounding result. Fourth place uh, same as he did in Bahrain three weeks ago. Will the race pace hold on? Uh, we're not sure. Uh, we saw it three weeks ago in Bahrain the McLaren got the best of the Ferraris overall, but very, very great job. Uh, Leclerc saying at the beginning of the weekend that the Ferrari had the potential to be the third best car in uh, if they are a bit lucky and in good conditions. So good luck to him tomorrow. And our top three, Max Verstappen, very good first lap, could not improve on his second lap. So that is why he is only third but I think the big surprise here is Sergio Perez uh, already had a pretty good first lap but improving getting a stunning lap uh, during his second outing only 35 thousandths of a second behind Lewis Hamilton this is uh, this is faster than a blink of an eye so Perez really um, on the edge there and he will start on the soft while Hamilton on pole position starts on the medium. So right at the start, Sergio Perez could potentially take the lead and control the race. And this will be very, very important the start tomorrow because two Red Bull, one Mercedes. The Red Bull got the weapons to fight with Lewis Hamilton and take the victory home. And yes, Lewis Hamilton, 
99th pole position in career 30th track where he gets a pole position very good job indeed a bit lucky because he also did not improve on his second lap but gotta give him credit he did what he had to do pole position this is the place where it's the easiest to win the race tomorrow that's it guys thank you once again for watching uh, please subscribe hit the like button and uh, i will see you again tomorrow after the race so please don't miss the emilia romagna grand prix hope you appreciated that and uh, have a good day